looks, shoot your arrows. Cooper Cup plucks it out of the air and gives the Rams the lead. Robert Wood, touchdown, LA. Dog goes crashing into the end zone. Aaron Donald almost beat the football there. Corey Littleton, have yourself a day. Picked off, Marcus Peters. Coming off the edge, and Ryan will be wrapped up by Clay Matthews. Everett in stride, wow. Franklin Myers gets his hand down there. Leno got a hand on it. Did he pick it? He did! Racing down the sideline is a key to leave. Gurley for MVP! Touchdown LA! Picked off by John Johnson. Well, Dante Fowler, who is able to get to breathe. Greg Zerline sends the Rams to the Super Bowl! Oh! LA wow. will play for the Lombardi! All right, join the show. We have Troy Reader, former linebacker of Delaware, now Rams linebacker. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. Going well. I'm so excited to talk to you. And just to start this off, we just want to hear a little bit about how you got into the game of football. Yeah, um, my dad was a football player. Um, He played for University of Delaware like I did. And uh, played for the Pittsburgh Steelers, so football has always kind of been a part of our family and uh, what we do. Uh, it's been a big part of my life since I was just a little baby growing up and then started playing in, in third grade and then uh, kind of fell in love immediately with it and uh, just took off from there. Yeah, of course, man. And, um, you know, growing up, who was your uh, favorite player, you know, player in the NFL you looked up to the most? Um, You know, I had a couple that were tough. I'd say growing up, my childhood would be LaDainian Tomlinson. Yeah, and uh, when it came time for you to play in college, you ended up playing at Delaware. I mean, what was your overall there? Um, so I originally was at, I spent my first two years at Penn State. Um, so I spent some time there. I started my redshirt freshman season. And then uh, I decided to come back and uh, play transfer to Delaware uh, because my brother, who's two years younger than me, committed to play at Delaware and I uh, wanted to play football with him. Something we grew up doing and you, know, you only have one opportunity to make that happen in life and i just went with my gut and left penn state even though i had a good start to my college career there and finished up at delaware playing uh i played inside linebacker and my brother played outside linebacker right next to each other that's awesome man you know especially you know you you mentioned you start your uh, college career at Penn State, you transfer and everything, and the reason for transferring, and just the fact that you have some uh, some bloodlines, uh, you know, in that family mm-hmm. that you know re- result in football. But um, you know, I kind of want to ask you, you know, from your time at Delaware, um, if you had to, what would be, what would you call your one shining moment um, while at Delaware? Um, you know, I think just culmination of all our work um over the past few years that um i was a captain my junior and senior year those were being elected for the first time as a as a junior captain i think was probably one of my proudest moments and this this past season uh we got our team into the playoffs um after a pretty long drought that started long before i had transferred into delaware and just getting that program back going on the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I just want to ask a little bit about what was the pre-draft process like for you? Um, It was, it was exciting. Um, Definitely fun. Got to meet a lot of really great people, work with uh, some great players and uh, great coaches. Um, I was down in Florida for a little while training at Bomberito Performance, and while I'm home, I train at a place called Titus Sports Academy, which is in Newark, Delaware. And, uh, you know, both of those places, it just, it's nice to be able to work with uh, a bunch, a group of guys that just have similar goals to you, um, aspiring to reach the same level of uh, professional football. So, 
you know, I got, I thought that was a great experience. And then you're working with some of the best coaches in the business and uh, both positionally and uh, speed, strength, conditioning type of components. So, you know, it was, it was a fun process. Yeah, it must have been. But, um, you know, throughout the process, if if you could really pick one thing, um, what would you say you most improved on as far as your game's concerned? Um, Game-wise, I think uh, one thing that I really focused on, just I mean, kind of the nature of training in the off-season, uh, especially now as a professional athlete, is, you know, you're not hitting in the off-season. You're taking care of your body. And a lot of the things that we were doing through the pre-draft process that I carried over um, all the way through the winter and the spring and then um, right now is uh, really training as a, def- as a defensive back. So when I was down in Florida, we had a large group of uh, DBs, corners, and safeties, and uh, pretty much every day I just was hopping in with them, doing their skill work, um, and I figure if you can cover like a safety, you'll be all right at linebacker. So different stuff like that. And uh, we had a really good DB coach named EJ Biggers who played for uh, several seasons in the NFL. Um, and obviously he's, he was a DB, so that was where a lot of his uh, expertise lied. So just getting that kind of um, teaching and uh, reps under that kind of teacher at a different style was, uh, I think, really good for me. Yeah, and, uh, you know, when the draft ended, you end up being a UDFA. I mean, what was that whole 24-48 hour period like um, once the draft ended? And did you have, uh, when was it that you had contact with the Rams? Um, you know, it's a, it's an interesting 24-48 hours. You know, obviously you have an idea going in. Uh, where you see yourself going but ultimately you know that's the work leading up to the draft is in your control but draft day is really out of your control so you know I knew going into the draft that the Rams were great situation uh, for me Uh, phenomenal coaching staff and uh, a, a really good place that I saw an opportunity for me to grow as a player and uh, start off my career on the right foot. So, you know, for, for things to end up the way they did. And I ended up uh, a Ram drafted or undrafted was uh, really a really good situation that worked out well. And uh, now I'm just excited waiting around at home now for uh, ready to get the opportunity to go out there and, and play and learn under some really good guys. Yeah, I definitely hear you there. And I just kind of want to go back to, um, you know, right after the draft. I mean, I just want to get your thoughts on, you know, there's really two ways you can kind of look at it. I mean, you could want to sign with the team immediately or kind of, you know, take everything in and wait till your fit kind of comes. But, you know, how did you really process all of that? You know, um, I had a plan uh, going into the day with um, if the draft ended and I wasn't picked where I felt like was the best situation for me. And then um, as that, as the day rolled on, like you just kind of take a peek at who's, who's taken some, who's taken picks um, at your position or anything like that. And you begin to adjust and uh, it's pretty analytical. And uh, some of it is just part of your gut, a good gut feeling. And um, for me, the Rams at the end of the draft were the best, um, the best situation I thought for myself. And that's, that's not necessarily for every person, but, um, you know, when it comes down to it and you're making a really big life decision, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of things that go into it, a little faith, some of your guts, and then just, you know, some expertise of, uh, the, the friends, family, agency that you surround yourself with and in helping make that decision. And for me, luckily, it was it was a pretty quick decision. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're very excited that you ended up in L.A. Ram and are so excited to see what you do. And, uh, you know, NFL Rookie Minicamp is coming up. I mean, what are you most excited about as uh, you go to minicamp? 
I'm just excited to go compete now. Um, it's just been since since my season was over. You know, it's just been a, a steady grind of just you know a lot of things that weren't football related, and uh, some of them were, some of them weren't. But you know, a lot of training, a lot of hours putting in on your own uh, with a group, and now it's finally time to just go play football, and and that's. That's the sport I love, and don't get me wrong. I love the training. I love the uh, the grind and getting getting ready to play the season. But there's still just nothing that quite compares to being able to go out there and play real football. Yeah, you know, I I definitely think you have really hit the nail on the head on that one. I mean, it's you know we, we've talked to uh, a couple of your new teammates and. You know, really, it just is you guys. I mean, this is the longest kind of, you know, waiting period I think you guys have kind of experienced since this draft process started and then ended. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it must be kind of weird not being around any type of, you know, football related activities, kind of just waiting now, uh, you know, for the mini camp. Um, but uh, I got, you know, I got to ask you um, to kind of close this out. Um, you know, to the Rams listeners, what are the Rams getting in Troy Reader as a player, and what are they getting, you know, in you as a person off the field? Um, you know, for me, I I take a lot of pride in my work ethic. Um, I'm a lead by example type of guy, and uh, you know, I'm going to come in to the Rams organization, and uh, you know, I, I promise whatever they ask of me, I'm, I'll do to the best of my ability and with 100 percent effort and uh work ethic so you know i'm a head down grind lunch pail type of guy so um not much hooting and hollering but a lot of just work so you know as whatever they ask of me um i'll be ready to do that's awesome you know we love it we love talking to you and uh we're so excited to see what you do with the rams and uh you know we'll be cheering you on Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Troy. Um, you know, definitely stay healthy and, uh, you know, good luck out there and uh, let's stay in touch, man. Thanks. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yep, have a good one, Troy. Take care. Thanks. You guys too. All right, join us on the show. New Rams tight end, Romello Brooker from Houston. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. How you doing? How you doing? We're good. We're so excited to talk to you. And uh, just to start this off, we just want to hear a little bit about how you got into the game of football. Uh, how I got into the game of football. I started playing uh, middle school, actually. Um, ever since I, you know, picked up the football, I pretty much loved it. Uh, I love to compete. Um, I love to win. I hate to lose. So uh, it all just came together, you know, and uh, made me really talented at the sport that I play. So, yeah. Yeah, of course. And, and growing up, um, did you have a favorite player you looked up to? Uh, Calvin Jensen. Um, I was actually a receiver before I was a tight end. Uh, and, you know, being a big you know receiver, I always loved, uh, you know, the the idol that Calvin Jensen was, you know, a bigger receiver, you know, dominating in the game of football. Um, him and Andre Johnson, I pretty, pretty much looked up to those two guys, really. Yeah, and uh, when it came time for you to play in college, you ended up playing at Houston. What was that experience like? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, at Houston, you know, it was close to home. Uh, my folks were always able to see me, you know, at home games for sure. Uh, I was still in the city, you know, Houston, and um, I love my city. So, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was great playing, you know, right down the road. Yeah, and if you had to pick one – you know, like one particular moment, your one shining moment from your time at Houston, uh, what would that have been? Uh, my last season in general, just the, the whole season. If I can put the whole season into a moment, I would definitely would. Uh, just my last season, as you know, I was utilized way more and I was actually given an opportunity, you know, to show what I can do. Um, I loved every bit of it, you know, uh, and yeah, I would I would say that was I pretty much sums it up for that moment. Yeah, and uh, when your college career came to an end, you obviously started the pre-draft process. What was that like for you? Uh, 
it was, um, you know, a, a slow process, uh, you know, just having to work out, you know, all the time and, uh, you know, getting ready for, you know, the pro day and the combine, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, it was a slow process, but I loved, you know, every bit of it. You know, I've always been a gym rat, so it was uh, pretty amazing to me, you know, just the whole experience in general. And um, I definitely don't take it for granted, you know, because most people don't get these opportunities, so. Yeah, and, you know, during this pre-draft process um, that you went through, what would you say you most improved on as far as your game's concerned? Uh, I would definitely say uh, just getting stronger and uh, getting faster. Really. Um, I was always, you know, a pretty decent runner at my size. Uh, just, you know, getting faster. Like I said, getting stronger. I know I'm going to have to be, you know, way stronger on the next level, you know. Um, blocking the Von Millers of the, you know, of the league and, you know, other, other outside linebackers, you know, I know I'm going to have to, you know, get that strength up. So just been focusing on my strength, really, to be honest. Yeah, and um, after the draft, you were picked up by the Rams as a UDFA. And if you could just tell us a little bit about um, kind of what that was like and what that whole 24, 48-hour period after the draft was like. Oh, um, man, it was amazing, to be honest. Uh, just, like I said, to get this opportunity, um, it's an opportunity that most people don't get, and God has blessed me with the opportunity. You know, uh, to play for an amazing organization like the Rams. Um, I'm very grateful. And uh, to be honest, I'm just ready to get to work. Yeah, no, I I definitely hear you there. Um, you know, it, it must have been uh, you know pretty crazy. You know, this whole experience. I, I kind of want to get your take on you know what went into all this. I mean, you know, the draft ends. Like, take me through your you know 24, 48 hour period after the draft ended, and and how you ended up a Ram. Okay, well, yeah, um, just going through the process, I always knew, well, well, from what I was always told, I was going to get drafted anywhere on the third day or picked up on the third day. Uh, so, you know, just going into it, um, I was, you know, looking forward to getting, you know, drafted or whatever, but at the end of the day, you know, like I said, I just needed an opportunity, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Uh, so when I did get picked up by the Rams, it was still it was still green for me, you know, it was still a go for me, so... Uh, like I said, I'm just excited, man, to, to play football and to continue to play football. I'm going to play this game as long as I can, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, was there any particular reason that you chose to sign with the Rams? Um, Yeah, just, uh, like I said, opportunity. Um, I feel like I have an opportunity, you know, at the Rams. Uh, the organization is a great organization. Um, I mean, last year, you know, going to the Super Bowl and all, you know, they're, like I said, an amazing organization. They have an amazing staff. Uh, I was pretty much, you know, in contact with, you know, coaches from the Rams organization, you know, the whole process. So, uh, and they liked me, you know. When I was up there at CGS, College Great Iron Showcase, um, I, you know, opened eyes up there also. Uh, when I did my, my pro day, you know, I had a coach, you know, right there, front center. You know, watch me do what I do. Um, he loved it. I impressed him. Uh, I just want to continue to, you know, impress people and, you know, wake people up to show, you know, what I can do. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just excited, man. Yeah, and you, you use the word excited a lot, um, you know, throughout <laughs> this uh, interview. And I just want to, you know, get your, your – <laughs> I just want to get your, uh, you know, thoughts on, on what you're most excited about. I know it's probably hard to, to narrow it down, but what are you most excited about as you officially enter an NFL uh, well, rookie minicamp? For the opportunity, man, you know, most people just want to make it to the league. Um, me, honestly, I want to play in the league as long as I can. I want to, you know, set goals and, you know, break through those goals. You know, I, I know my – you know, potential has no ceiling on it. Um, I just want to go and, you know, be a dominant player, man. And I'm just excited for the opportunity. I mean, yeah, man. It's, like I said, it's a dream come true. Most people don't get these opportunities. I mean, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you can say it, man. I'm just excited, man, for the opportunity guys give me. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, just for our Rams listeners out there, what are they getting in Romello Brooker as a player on the field and as a person off of it? Uh, you're getting a high character guy, you know, that uh, loves to win, hates to lose, willing to do anything to help the team win. It uh, doesn't matter what it is. 
at the end of the day, I just love winning. I love being a part. I love being a part of something, you know, bigger um, and being a part of the Rams organization. Uh, dream come true once again. And, um, yeah, uh, I'm a hard worker. I'm dedicated. Um, I do all things through Christ. So everything I'm going to do, you know, is to glorify God. Um, and, yeah, uh, it's an amazing opportunity, and I won't take it for granted at all. Yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. I mean, you were you were catching passes from Derek King, who's probably going to go really high in this this draft upcoming and and uh <laughs> oh, yeah. he is uh he's definitely a stud. That's my guy. <laughs> but uh Oh yeah, that's my guy. That's but my uh guy. you know, you're going from you know catching passes from him to, you know, potentially catching passes from Jared Goff. So, um, you know, it's I I obviously Derek is an absolute stud, but it must be, you know, really cool to to go from, you know, you watch these guys, you, you watch Jared in the Super Bowl, and, and now you're going to, you know, be catching passes from these guys, you know, at the next level. But, but yeah, yeah. man, um, you know, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, we'll be rooting for you. Stay healthy, and let's keep in touch. Almost definitely, most definitely. I thank you again for the interview. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Romello. All right. You guys have a good one. You too, man. Take care. All right, join us on the show. We have Rams defensive lineman Tyrell Thompson from Tarleton State. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. Well, no problem. I'm doing very well. Awesome. Uh, and just to get this thing started, we just want to hear a little bit about how you got into the game of football. Um, I started playing football. Really, I started playing my eighth grade year. Um, we were in Virginia. My dad a uh, retired military, so uh, we used to live like pretty much anywhere. And... Um, we were in Virginia at the time, and my brother was playing um, at the high school. And in Virginia, they don't have like middle school athletics. And so I played um, in eighth grade on the junior varsity team. And I kind of played there for a little bit, but then it really didn't really get started until my freshman year. We moved back to Texas, and that's when I kind of picked up football and started getting the love for it. That's awesome, man. And, you know, um, growing up, did you have a favorite football player that you looked up to? Um, not really one player, you know, I was, uh, kind of into anybody who was, you know, big name back then, but, uh, you know, if I had to pick one player, it'd probably be like a, a Warren Sapp or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good pick for sure. He's very talented. And, uh, uh, I just kind of want to ask a little bit, how was your overall college experience at Tarleton State? Oh, I, I definitely loved it. You know, I was only there for two years, but, you know, the time that I was there, you know, I really met some amazing people on and off the field. And, you know, everybody there is one big family once, you know, you get go, get there and get comfortable and things like that. And, you know, it's definitely a place where, you know, if a crew, you know, if asking me if they should go to college, and I would definitely tell them yes because, you know, the bond that I made there with all my friends and coaches and just support staff around there is like none, like none um, other yeah, you know, absolutely. And and what was one moment that really stuck out in your head, you know, from your time in college? Definitely, I would say this past season, uh, we played uh, Midwestern, MSU, Texas. And uh, 2017, we went to overtime with them. We lost to them. And then this past year, we went to overtime with them again. And uh, now our offense went down to score on the first drive. And then uh, the defense, it was like fourth and ten. And uh, they did score, but on the extra point, uh, the snap was bobbled. And uh, the fact that, you know, I was able to get through the line and, you know, make that, we could say, game-winning tackle was something really big for me. And just seeing all my teammates and coaches just on the field and it was at their field, too. So that just made it so special. And I was definitely a memory that I'm not going to forget. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds awesome. And, uh, you know, when your college career came to an end, you start the pre-draft process. So what was that like for you? Um, you know, it was a little different, you know, than, uh, you know, you would say like a Division One guy, you know, I had to kind of market myself a little bit and, uh, you know, look at different agents and different companies and stuff like that. But, you know, um, I started, you know, looking around and once I felt comfortable with the agent that I have, you know, just getting started in the, the training process and things like that. And, you know, different training for combines and actually training for football. So that was a bit of an adjustment. But once everything got going, it was a pretty smooth process. 
Yeah, and you know, throughout your pre-draft process training, um, what is one area in your game that you really improved on? Would you say? Definitely flexibility. You know, I'm uh, a big, tall guy, but uh, I wasn't very really that flexible. So that's definitely something that we uh, focused on every day. You know, whether it was yoga or different types of uh, you know lifting or stretching, something like that. You know, definitely that area of my game. Um, you know, because I was already fast for my size but even being more flexible being more loose so it helped me more you know just my first step as a defensive lineman and then being able to do different things being in different areas like that definitely take my cancer to a different level yeah and uh you know when the draft ended you were picked up by the rams as a udfa could you tell us a little bit about what that experience was like so uh you know uh i did watch you know all three days of the draft and um you know, watching, cause I have our friends who went, you know, first day, second day. And so seeing them, you know, get those calls and seeing their name come up on TV, it was kind of, you know, uh, kind of heartfelt for them. And then day three comes and you're sitting there waiting, you know, waiting, waiting for your phone to ring or, you know, something like that. But then, uh, you know, that didn't come through or whatever. But uh, it was midway through the sixth round, I believe, my agent called me and told me that he was working out a deal uh, with the Rams, and so I was being patient. I know the Rams had um, two subs on picks, so I was being patient and waiting. And then, you know, my uh, phone didn't ring then. You know, I got kind of you know, down a little bit, but then, like, literally five minutes after the draft ended, um, my phone rang and my agent told me that we had to deal with the Rams, and I just couldn't be more happier because that's definitely where I wanted to be. So I thought everything played out the way it was supposed to be. Yeah, and something that was interesting is, um, you know, your teammate, EJ Speed, actually um, was drafted. Um, you know, he's now with the Colts and, and you're with the Rams. Were you guys, uh, you know, close at all being teammates and, and being on that same uh, defense? Yeah, we were. Um, actually, we were pretty close because, uh, you know, um, I played three technique in our defense. And EJ played real linebacker right behind me. And so, you know, uh, my job this season was to pretty much take up blocks so EJ can make plays. And that's what I did. You know, I accepted that role and uh, he was able to make the plays that he was made. And so uh, one year, one day, uh, EJ got a player of the week for you know, one of our games. And I told him that, you know, I need half of that because I was taking up triple teams and double teams and he was coming free. And so me and him, we were really close together. Uh, you know, it was really a good thing for him and good for the Charleston program that he got drafted and drafted so high. It was just really kind of shocking because none of us expected that. So that's really good for him. Yeah, and I just want to ask real quick, uh, had you met or talked with the Rams at all pre-draft? I did. Uh, one of their scouts came to uh, my pro day, and also I met with them uh, during the season uh, twice. And then we were talking about you know, every two or three weeks during the season, just keeping up with how my season was going and things like that. But I actually started – you know, kind of small talk with them. My junior year, they came to recruit some of our seniors, and I stood out to the scout being one of the, you know, bigger guys on the team. And so he took my name down and uh, kind of had small talk then and, you know, definitely put my interest into the Rams. And like I said, that's where I wanted to be, and I feel like that they really wanted me. Yeah, and, you know, really as as this whole thing, you know, comes down the, you know, to – pretty much the end of this whole process and you, you finished, you know, the pre-draft and, and the drafts over um, the NFL, you know, rookie mini camp is coming up and, and I just want to get your thoughts on, you know, what you're most excited about um, as this thing, uh, you know, comes closer. I'm most excited about, you know, definitely getting out there with, you know, different guys, guys I'm not used to playing with and, you know, learning from them, you know, coming from, you know, some of them bigger schools, some of them like small schools as me, but, you know, definitely just, you know, being with different teammates and really just learning how to be, you know, professional football players. You know, you play football, some guys are playing since they were like in third grade and, you know, others started late like me, but at the end of the day, we're all professional football players right now. So all of us just come together and see what we can, you know, put together is going to be really special. Yeah, definitely. And uh, just for our Rams listeners out there, what are they getting in Tyrell Thompson as a player on the field and as a person off of it? A player on the field, you know, a hard worker, you know, first one in, last one out type of guy. And, 
you know, I'm very versatile on the D-line, so, you know, I can play any position. I'm not going to ever say, like, no, I don't want to, you know, play this position. I'm only a three technique. Like, you know, I'm willing to play anything. I'm willing to play special teams, you know. So I'm definitely a team guy. I put the team first. And then off the field, you know, no issues or like that. Uh, you know, I'm very friendly. Um, you know, I want to help out in the community as much as I can. And, you know, just be there for everyone who... You know, come up to me, take pictures, sign autographs, whatever the case may be. You know, just help you, like, carry groceries to your car, you know, whatever, whatever you need. You know, that type of guy to be there for you. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, that that's that's obviously awesome. Um, you know, we're excited for you. This is obviously a huge opportunity. Is there any, uh, you know, last thoughts that you want to kind of throw out there for our listeners, uh, you know, getting to know the new uh, Los Angeles Ram? Um, you know, just... You know, I'm open to anything, you know, uh, any type of questions anyone may have or anything like that. Um, you know, my my number is very accessible to anyone who needs it. And, um, you know, just excited to get out there and transitioning from Texas to L.A. I feel like it'll be a smooth transition and just excited to work with the Rams staff and meet different people in L.A. So looking forward to it. Yeah. We love it. Thank you so much, Tyrell, for coming on and taking the time to talk to us. No problem. Anytime. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, you know, definitely stay healthy. Uh, good luck, and uh, let's keep in touch, Tyrell. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank you, guys.